All right, in this video, we're going to go over enemy spawners. And uh, there's two main types of spawners in the game. There's proximity spawners, and there's random spawners that will just spawn enemies that randomly come at the player or patrol. Uh, proximity spawners will uh, only spawn when the player gets within a certain distance. So why don't we go ahead and see how we can create a random spawner and just get something going on in our level right now. So what we're going to do is we're going to expand our hierarchy right here. Place enemy spawners here. I have a enemy spawner template right here. And I have it deactivated. I don't know if you do or not, but I do. So I'm going to reactivate it. And uh, it's kind of in the middle of a building right here. So I'm going to move it out right, you know, from out of the building. Um and maybe move it a little bit closer to the center of the map or so. Uh, what I need to do now is I need to actually decorate the guns on the spawner. The spawners uh, kind of operate like turrets. Uh, you can forego this step and uh, turn off the attack frequency of the spawner and have no uh, guns at all if you don't want one. Uh, but we're going to assume that, you know, the more danger, the better. So we're going to go ahead and decorate this spawning platform. Uh, I want to go into my enemy spawn points folder down here in my project window. And I'm going to go to parts, and they're basically the same as the enemy parts. So you can decorate this up any way you kind of want. But mainly, we're just going to stick to guns right now. But I want to create a base for my gun out of, let's see, uh, I want to grab. Uh, miscellaneous egg engine. So this is going to be the base of my turret. And where are we going to place this? Well, we probably need to place it on our enemy spawner, but I don't have it expanded, so I'm just going to set my egg right here for now. And I'm going to go ahead and expand my enemy spawner. And it looks pretty much the same as a regular enemy. Um, and I'm just going to drag and drop my egg onto the spawner right there. So there's my egg. This is, like I said, gonna be the base of the gun. And I'm gonna have it kind of centered in this little track right here. So it looks like, you know, there's a, a track it goes on. Um, I'm gonna put it right at the top of the circle where it kind of gets really vertical. That's where we're gonna build the base of my gun. And the gun's gonna kind of rotate around the perimeter right here. So this little egg will follow it along. Uh, we need to set its body type to right gun. This whole little uh, turret we're about to build is going to be right gun only. And I think I'm going to grab a thigh. That one looks pretty groovy. And place the part on my enemy spawner. And let's just go ahead and move that into place as well. So it's going to be kind of like a little weapons tower. Like so. And let's just grab a gun real quick. I'm not going to be picky here. Just a gun to uh, shoot some bullets at our player. There we go. I kind of want to set it back. So it's kind of like one big turret. And why don't we center it a little bit better? We can use our view cube right here to kind of go on our top view. Side view, front view, perfect. Well, it's good to rotate around whatever you're looking at at all times because it kind of helps you see, you know, that wasn't centered, but now I know what it was because I looked underneath. All right, so now I'm going to uh, make sure that these all say, I can select my egg, thigh, and gun, and I can all set them at once to right gun. And then I can duplicate that. Bring it over here to the left gun. And set it to left gun. And I think I might need to set where my bullets come out of. That little arrow. Notice how I had to click at it twice to get a hold of it. There we go. So now my platform has some guns that can shoot at our player. Um. 
what kind of weapons do you want to have for your uh, turret? Well, of course, that's always up to you, you know. You can just delete whatever bullet's already there and replace it. Remember, the game will crash if you have more than one kind of weapon right here. So whatever new weapon you want to put here, you have to delete the old ones. But I'm going to keep it on standard bullet. I don't want this thing to be too fancy. The one thing I will do, and the one thing I recommend for all turrets on a spawner, is to select your guns. I want to select both standard bullets for my primary and secondary. And I'm going to come down here in my inspector. And I'm going to set its movement type to homing. And you might wonder, why would you want homing bullets? Well, whenever you set a bullet to homing, and you don't, you leave this unchecked, homing seeking, then the bullet, you can see on my little tool tip here, uh, if it's unchecked, bullets are just aimed at the target. And we want the bullets to aim at the target for our uh, spawner, spawning plate, because if they just shot straight, our player could just sit right here in the middle, and our bullets would pass on either side of our player. But with homing turned on, they'll be kind of aimed at our player. But we don't want this thing to be a super sniper. Uh, one thing I also recommend doing is going up and finding spray. Where is spray? Let's see, there's angle. Spray in our bullet travel. And I recommend giving us a different uh, a spray. You know, 10 is pretty good. What that'll do is, even though our bullet will be aimed at our player, spray will randomize that angle even more so there will be a chance to miss the player. And uh, speed of our bullet, we want to slow these down to maybe 20, uh, increase the lifetime. So I'm kind of making like uh, spawner bullets. And you know what? I may go in and rename these and make a new prefab so I can uh, make sure I always have my spawn turret bullets set up good. And I want to increase the size to three. So these will be pretty big, or not pretty big, but larger than average bullets. And what do they want to look like? Um, I just want to do spheres. This is a really basic enemy. Uh, let's just do a standard sphere. All right, so that was actually a lot of things to tweak. So that means I want to come up here, and I'm going to rename standard bullet. And let's call this spawner turret. And then whenever we rename something to really save it, though, we need to, I'm going to go down to weapon types and to really save it as a prefab. After we rename it, we drag and drop it into a folder down here in our project window. So awesome. We got our turret um, almost made. Uh, the one thing I want to do now after decorating and before getting into stats, why don't we go ahead and turn our enemy spawner into a prefab as well. So I'm going to call this enemy spawner A. And I'm going to navigate to my project window down here and go to enemy spawn points. We'll leave spawner template alone. And we'll drag this new enemy spawner A right down here. And now you can see that enemy spawner A has some turrets on it. While our template is still kind of empty. All right, great. And from here, we just kind of place our spawners throughout the level. Um, I'm going to go ahead and place these kind of uh, at the corners of the far edge of the map. Like so, for, you know, just for right now. Uh, those will be the random spawners. Uh, so they'll just spit out enemies at random. And to make sure that they're both doing what we want, we need to take a look at our spawning uh, AI. So whenever I was making these uh, spawners, I just originally just had them to be like a place enemies go come out of. But then I realized what's stopping me from just making that also kind of have the behavior of an enemy. So I came up with uh, an extra little section of a enemy AI properties you can see in my inspector over here well that's stats enemy ai properties right here um uh, we have spawner properties down here and is this a spawner so if this was unchecked 
nothing would spawn on it. And typically, this is what you want to have unchecked for just regular enemies. But of course, this is a spawner. And is it stationary? So this little check mark will make sure that the enemy spawner doesn't move around. Uh, if we wanted our enemy spawner to move around, then uncheck it. But we want to create some fixed spots right now. And how many enemies at a time can uh, be out from these spawners? I'm going to go with 15 enemies. So both of these things will be able to spit out 30 enemies, 15 uh, enemies for each. And what kind of spawner type is this? Is this one that's activated by proximity, how close you get to it? No, we'll make a proximity one in a second. We're going to keep with the random. And then these two values are reserved for proximity spawners. So we're done here. All right. So boom, these are our two spawners. And we're going to leave them sitting right here in our enemy spawners group. And I believe uh, if our spawners are not sitting within this group, say if they're just, we have one up here and then one's down here and nothing in our spawners right here. I don't, I think the game will crash. I think my code is dependent on these spawners being in this group right here so hopefully you haven't deleted this group and hopefully you're heeding my advice and putting the spawners under here um, and that'll be a good place for them to rest until we make some more and then we start plugging them into our game manager so uh, why don't we create a proximity spawner um, and so I can we need to let the player know that this spawner is a little bit different it's not just a random spawner and we can do that by maybe uh decorating it a little bit uh more um so what i'm going to do is i'm going to base this new spawner off of an existing one because i've already got a good thing going here so i'm going to select one of the spawners here and i'm going to duplicate it and boom i'm going to come up here and i'm going to call this enemy spawner proximity so i know that this is kind of like a proximity spawner and we're going to put our proximity spawner let's see was a good place for it we'll put our proximity spawner on this side of the map it doesn't seem balanced but uh you know i just purposely made this map small just for demoing purposes so that'll be a decent place for it to be and i'm going to go ahead and Rotate it? No, I don't want to rotate it. It'll rotate itself if it needs to, because it'll be able to track the player. All right, so this is a proximity, and I'm going to uh, do some decorations here. Uh, but before that, I'm going to go ahead and drag spawner proximity down into my spawn points here in my project window. And you can actually drag and drop it and release right on the left-hand side here, and boom. Nothing's really different yet. So expand my proximity and we're going to place parts on here. You can see all my parts right there. You can also see uh, the spawner mesh. Uh, and then here's the particle effect for our spawner right there. So, um, you know, that's an energy field, wormhole, singularity, porthole, um, I guess. So what we want to do is... Uh, that was actually a good idea for selecting that um, particle effect because now we can kind of see what our spawner is going to look like in the game. And it's going to be uh, nice to place some uh, parts on here because if you put something right in the middle, it may not be as visible because look, all those particles right there. So now that we know where the particles aren't, we can put some decorations so that the player can clearly see that this might be a different kind of spawner. Uh, we don't. Uh, typically, players like to kind of know that something's up or something. You don't. Players don't like to be tricked or cheated by the designer. Um, anybody that's ever played a super hard Mario Maker level can attest to that. But some people do. So uh, different strokes. So in our enemy spawn points, here's our parts right here. I'm going to put satellites dishes all over this because. You know, this is a proximity spawner. Satellite dishes can do satellite stuff and listen for the player. And I think that'll be a pretty good signifier that this spawner is a little bit different. So we're going to do something like this. I'm going to put my satellite dishes right on these little towers right here. So maybe the 
So maybe, you know, player can know that, you know, this spawner is listening for us. Where are we going to go? And we're going to have to do make sure that we uh, assign it to something like the body. So we don't want it rotating like the guns. And we kind of want it just rock solid like the body of our enemy mech. And so here's just me moving things around and rotating them. Notice how I'm not rotating from the center and getting all. I'm kind of, oh, so when you do a control Z, it may take away your particle effect. So I'm just going to hit play right there and we can see our particle effect just jiving for us. Uh, there we go with that satellite dish. So, you know, that looks pretty clear. That looks pretty good. At least I think so. So we're going to make sure these satellite dishes are on the body. And guess what? They already are. Perfect. So that's our proximity spawn point. Oh, I don't like the way that satellite dish is just kind of floating there. I'm going to select it in my outliner. See, I don't really have it on there very good. I want to make sure it's kind of overlapping a little bit. Perfect. How is this one? That one looks pretty good. Except maybe it's a little too far over. And that's how you can become too obsessed with details while you're making a game. All right. So uh, why don't we go ahead and grab our proximity uh, spawner and take a look at some of the AI uh, properties that make it a proximity spawner. So in my inspector, I'm going to make sure I'm in enemy AI. You know, we have all these other guys over here, so I'm going to collapse them. And I'm just going to expand only what I want to use. That's a good rule of thumb for our inspector. Otherwise, look how crazy this thing can get. Oh, my goodness. And you just have to scroll, scroll, scroll forever. Uh, so that's not the best. And if you want to collapse them real fast, start from the top down. That way you don't have to keep scrolling to keep finding them. That's some tips and tricks. I've been trying to sprinkle some tips and tricks uh, here and there about just, you know, quality of life uh, procedures inside of Unity. So you're not just doing so much tedious clicking. So if we go in and open our enemy AI, uh, we see that we have the uh, old little properties we talked about just a second ago. And now we will be able to click that proximity. And our spawn range is kind of like a site range for our uh, spawner. Uh, so why don't we just set that? I have it really big. So, you know, it almost will always be on if it's 5,000. But if you recall, you know, our sight ranges were like in the 200 uh, era. So, you know, we got a pretty big range, you know, levels. You might make a pretty big level uh, at one point in your life. So I'm going to give this maybe a range of low 200s. And then I got to pick out um, what kind of range, how, how, many, how often is this proximity spawner going to spit out enemies while I'm inside of its spawn range? So I'm going to do a new enemy every two to four seconds. So a random number will be picked every every uh, spawn uh, for how many seconds in between the enemy spawns. And spawn number, why don't we up this by like 20? So, you know, if you're not on top of things, you could have 20 enemies just spawning all around you. Um, we didn't really talk about this for the last uh, spawner that we made. Uh, we kind of just glossed over the stats. Um, if you wanted to uh, make some uh, a spawner invulnerable and can't die, then this is what I recommend doing. Uh, turning off the health bar so the player doesn't think that the turret has any kind of health. And then expanding our stats and giving it just a huge health value of, you know, all the health in the world and setting its health to that same value right there. Um, right now, I don't think our player has uh, ammo that can do something. And, you know, might as well go ahead and increase the, the, the cooldown rate to 10 and the, and the, or yeah, the health rate. This is how fast the health will recharge. And this is how soon after you take damage that it'll start recharging. So instantly. So you take a hit and the, 
pretty much instantly blinks all the way full with uh, a rate of 10. So pretty much this turret is now invulnerable. And remember, showing our health bar or not is a good indicator to our player if we can destroy this uh, spawner or not. So I basically made my proximity uh, spawner invulnerable. So you get on this side of the map, you know, I'm going to probably tweak this range, but this is the, this is like a spawner that's going to make the player avoid this side of the map. Otherwise enemies are just more enemies are going to spawn. Um, if we revisit these spawners over here, our random spawners, then I think we have a health bar showing on these. And then if we look at the stats here, we have a health of five. So we can kill these turrets with minimal effort. Um, might as well, we can keep it there just so we can see how we can kill our turrets pretty easy. And of course, we can get a score value if we kill our turrets or our spawner as well. I might have been calling this thing a turret. It pretty much is a turret for all intents and purposes. So, tomato, tomato. Uh, all right. So, I think we're done with our proximity turret. Uh, we learned how we can adjust stats. And we learned what our enemy AI does whenever we are a spawner object. All right. Next, why don't we create one more type of spawner so we can kind of demonstrate how uh, we can have our spawners move around the level like enemies. So, uh, just to make sure, I'm going to go ahead and apply those changes to proximity and apply the changes to spawner A. Um, maybe I should have called this spawner random. I'm going to go back and do that. Spawner random. And this will be like random, random one. That's a little bit more clearer than A, huh? And I'm going to hit apply on that right there. All right. So uh, I'm wondering. Yeah, I might as well just build off of proximity and rename this to Flee. Spawner Flee. And we're going to make a spawner that actively moves away from the player. Uh, that'll be frustrating, won't it? We're trying to track down the spawner to kill it, but it runs away from us while shooting at us, probably. Now I'm going to bring enemy spawner fleeing down here. Uh, you can see that my enemy spawner A is still down here. And it's not called random. So why don't we fix that? Why don't we get rid of A? But we can see that, oh my goodness, my prefab has turned red. That doesn't look good. Never fear. If we bring random down here, boom. We turn blue again. And enemy spawner random seems to, one seems to be doing just fine right now too. You know what? Actually, just to make sure, I'm going to go ahead and duplicate random one. Because the great thing about uh, prefabs is not only is it a way to save like an enemy or a spawner or a player, but if I go into my project folder and select prox uh, uh, spawner random and I change the stats, not in the hierarchy by selecting something in the hierarchy, but by actually selecting the prefab in the project folder and I tweak its values right here. Um, why don't we give this a score of two since it's a spawner? So that's pretty rewarding. So now if we go and check our random spawners in here, we can go to revert. Hmm, why is that not working? Oh, it's because I gave our proximity turret the score of two. I'm going to go ahead and grab all my turret uh, spawners in here and give them scores of two. So there we go. If I select the actual uh, spawners in my game scene, they all have a score of two now. So prefabs are very powerful. All right, so here's my fleeing uh, spawner, and I'm going to put it on the other side here. And what we're going to do is uh, we're going to make it a, a, a random one, too. So we have two stationary randoms and one, one uh, spawner that moves away from our player. And what uh, I'll explain how we can control how these random uh, spawners spit out enemies in a second. Our proximity spawner is kind of doing its own thing. We said it's time. We said it's distance. Uh, you know what? And since this is a fleeing one, I'm going to scale it down a little bit. So it's a little bit more mobile. 
you know, a little bit more nimble around the map. And it's not a proximity spawner anymore, so I'm going to delete those satellite dishes. Break the prefab. Let's do it. Uh, and don't worry if I hit apply. It turns blue again, meaning we are a up-to-date saved prefab. And is there any kind of decoration I can put on here that makes it seem like it can move or run away? Um, I don't know, maybe some engines or, I don't know, I really don't, I have nothing right now. Maybe put some claws on it. A foot? Yeah, let's put some claws on it. I don't know why, but that seems pretty cool. Uh, you know, the player may not know what the claws mean, but they see a spawner with claws on it. They walk toward it and it runs away. Then they know maybe that spawners with claw, claws on them will run away from them. And they have to kind of track them down. The player will learn, hopefully. And we're just going to put some claw feet right there. And I'm going to pause this and put these other two in. All right, claws in place, like so. So it's a little bit different. It's smaller. It's got claws. I think our player will get the hint. Why don't we go ahead and look and see how we can get this thing to run away from us. All right. So that's going to be highly dependent on our enemy AI and our stats. So why don't we zoom in and get a good look at what we're doing here in our enemy AI. And remember, we have our fleeing uh, spawner selected. So we're here in our AI. Uh, we're going to turn on our health bar. We will be able to destroy this one. Um, and now, since we have a turret that's actually going to run around, we're going to uncheck is stationary, but keep spawner checked. Um, how many things can this spawn? Let's say, let's say it spawns five. We'll keep it somewhat fair. And we're going to change it back to random. And I'm just going to delete these values here because we don't need them anymore. It's a proximity. It will flee from the player. It will shoot at the player. And it will have a flee range of 300. So it's going to try to avoid the player at all cost. It does patrol. Uh, we do, we want our, uh, uh, our spawner not rushing the player. So if you don't have patrol turned on, then whatever is not a patroller will rush at the player. So does patrol is a good one here. And if we don't want it to go far, we want to kind of make it stay where we uh, uh, want it. Well, destination ranges all that stuff for the most most of the for the most part it's going to be running away from our player um but if it you know we get too far away then it can go back to its original patrol spot and keep spawning enemies there attack frequency we're, we've kind of just left it at this default value that we've been using it's working pretty good um and i want to fix these sight ranges on this guy because you know he's an enemy now and I want to kind of make it a little bit more fair here there we go so there's our enemy AI and this is a FLIR so this make it worth three points and we're gonna make it move as fat we're gonna make it move as fast as the player maybe faster we're going to make the player have to sprint towards it. And look, our health is too high. Uh, our FLIR will be have 10 health. We're going to make our player really work for that three points right there. And we're going to turn down the health rates. And we don't need to do ammo or fuel stuff because this is an enemy. All right. So with all those new changes made to my enemy spawner fleeing, I'm going to click apply in my inspector and save all those stats that I just tweaked to my fleeing turret right here, uh, spawner turret. And why don't we give this a good test and see what's gonna go on. All right. I think I need to bake a nav mesh real quick for this level. 
So, yeah, this is a good time to talk about the nav mesh. Right now, basically, our enemies don't have a map for how to walk around this level. Our AI, enemy AI, is walking blind. We need to kind of give these uh, enemy boys some kind of way to navigate around our city. And we do that by going to Window, and we go to Navigation, and we kind of open up something like this. That's an old one from an old city. So in my navigation window, it should open up next to your inspector. So we got two little tabs here. I'm going to go to bake and we're going to go to clear. That's going to get rid of that old one. And if we press bake, we should get a brand new one. Perfect. So now our enemies can walk around our level. Like so. Um, you may uh, come across some kind of weird uh, instance where, you know, no matter how many times you clear and bake, you're just not getting the best stuff. You know, you're not getting blue on your streets. Blue is where the enemy can walk on this little map here. And notice what I did. I have this plane right here. And our plane is kind of where our enemy can walk. Um, so we got to make sure that this plane encompasses our play area. And if you want to be real uh, optimized, you can make it almost exactly the dimensions that you want. So this is kind of like the uh, playable area for our enemies. Um, if we set that plane to be as big as our concrete right here, Trust me, it would take a few minutes to bake this little blue navigation map. All right, so we've resized our plane. We're going to hit clear again. And why don't we give us a new bake with our optimized uh, plane right here. And boom. A perfect little map. Now I think if we press play... All right. I did have a game crashing error occur, so I paused it so I could troubleshoot it real quick. Whenever we made our fleeing uh, spawner really small, I don't know, something about being able to detect the nav mesh, um, it just didn't like it being really small. Maybe it's because it got too low, maybe if I pull it up. Let's see if we can figure out some way to uh, get nav meshes on small things working because we want to scale down some enemies anyway, you know. All right, so we're going to rebake this again. We sized him up just a little bit and I kind of pulled him up. Let's see what happens there. All right, so the, the trick is just don't make them too small. If you get an error, let's re replicate that bug with our nav mesh. So I'm going to go back and grab this fleeing guy, and I think I made him really small. I'm going to go to my inspector, and I'm going to zero him out in the Y position. So we're going to put him right on the ground. I think that's where all the rest of my turrets are. So we're going to see if it's because of the his height now, or he was just too small maybe. So I'm going to go even smaller. We're going to press play, and it doesn't like it. It just doesn't like being that small. So I'm going to raise him a little bit. See if maybe being on top of the nav mesh a little bit will do the trick. Nope, just too small too small of a guy. What if we actually open up our nav mesh component here? And set the radius up a little bit. Yeah, I know that's what, okay, that's what it was. So for our spawners, I had to set our radius really low because uh, our radius and our nav mesh agent component here is basically how big physically our enemies are. So when it hits a building, it knows, you know, hey, I'm kind of this big around. So for our spawners, that was messing up with enemies that would appear on it. So I made it really small. So if we want a really small one, why don't we set that to instead of 0.01, Point 0.1 radius in our nav mesh agent. Now let's try. That's what it was. Um, 
So we'll press enter. And now our spawner should be making some enemies, maybe. I don't know. But we do see that our little spawner guy right here is trying to run away from us. Oh, look, he's even firing. Oh, and then when I run away, he kind of runs back to his little patrol area. Enemies aren't spawning because we haven't really set them to. So I just goes to show you that. Kind of goes to show you that, uh, you know, keep mine. It's dead. Be oh yeah, those cars. Okay, so we we are spawning. Our proximity spawner does work. So if we're within distance here, this guy, he's got the buzz saw again. There it goes. And then we can kind of see our spawner trying to shoot at us. And the cool thing about enemies are they can shoot up here. Oh, that. And we're actually something. And we have. Victory, I guess. Whatever. We're just testing stuff. All right. So let's figure out why maybe our random spawners weren't working by taking a look at our game manager, enemy manager. The game manager is the last missing piece of the puzzle here for our enemy spawners. And uh, our game manager is kind of like this invisible guy in the clouds kind of dictating some of the bigger components of the game, such as how, you know, enemy spawns can, can occur. So with my game manager selected right here, I have a few scripts over here in my inspector. And what we want to look at right now is GM script. And that's why, oh, that's a really terrible misspelling. And in, in enemies, uh, we didn't have that check though. So make sure you sp you spawn in enemies. Um, uh, if you don't spawn the enemies, then the enemies won't spawn. Uh, you got to check it for the, that to happen. Um, so that's the main thing we want to check in our GM script right now for spawning. Uh, we'll cover all these other conditions in our very last video when we start setting win conditions for our level. Uh, now we want to open up our enemy manager. All right, so our enemy manager is pretty complex, uh, but once you understand it, it gives you a lot of versatility on how enemies spawn in your level. Uh, so I collapse these parameters, these properties right here, just to make it a little bit easier right now. Um, I'll explain what they do and then expand each one and see how we can tweak it. Um, spawn time, this is our spawn time for our random enemy spawner. Our proximity spawners handle their own time. They're doing their own thing. They're kind of lone wolves out there. Uh, but our uh, spawn time for our random spawners, they are d managed by our enemy manager right here. Um, every two seconds seems good. We'll just leave it at every two seconds on, on the dime. All right. So now we have three different kinds of uh, sections here. Enemies, uh, this is where we set what enemies we want to spawn in the stage, what enemy prefabs that we've previously saved. We can set what enemies we want to see in the stage. So you can have different enemies for different stages. And then we pick how often those enemies spawn. Does your uh, little guy spawn twice as many times as your big guy to kind of balance stuff out? Um, you know, so we can set that stuff. Our spawn scores are really nice. Uh, so let's pretend um, that our score, you know, we keep eye on our score as a designer and it allows us to have a lot of flexibility through our game. Uh, we can have a score needed to start spawning. So the way our game is eventually going to work is if we have three levels, then on the last level, if you beat maybe a boss, then it just repeats back to the beginning of the level. So. You could have a stat set right here that you know that uh, the first time, the first loop around our game, they're not going to have that score to start spawning. 
But the second time we come back to level one, we're going to have a score that meets this criteria. And then we can start spawning maybe some harder enemies the second time through. So we can add an element of even though we're repeating our stages, we can spawn new enemies in. And I'll show us how we can incorporate that in a second. And then we can also say, okay, these enemies are getting too weak to be using in, you know, the later stages. Uh, so we can stop spawning a certain enemy after we reach a score. So we can create levels that repeat, but with different enemies every time we loop through the game. Um, theoretically, you could play this game infinitely. And if you pay enough attention and do uh, give enough TLC to the uh, levels and the enemies, you can almost have, you know, you could go through the game 10 times over and be facing new enemies each time. And then this little uh, ditty right here, uh, we can set the drop chance of every enemy type in our level. So uh, enemy A will drop a power up 50% of the time, while enemy B, the harder enemy, will drop it maybe 90% of the time. So you can set that the harder enemies have a higher chance of dropping a power up for you. All right. So we understand what we can do kind of with these values. Now we need to understand how to uh, utilize them and, you know, get exactly the kind of behavior we want out of them. All right. So here we go. Um, we know that when, as we've been making uh, our enemies, uh, let me just go into my project folder and let's find my enemy folder here. Enemy mix. We have enemy A and enemy B so far. So those are our pool of enemies. Hopefully, uh, you may have 10 different enemies that you can pull from. But two different enemies is enough to demonstrate how these properties function. All right. So that's great. What we're going to do is we're going to expand these one at a time and tweak them to get the behavior we want. So what we're going to do is we are setting up arrays or lists of values here. So with that means is that we can set our size of our list. So if I have 10 enemies, I can type in 10 for my enemies size and boom. Now I have 10 different slots where I can drag and drop different enemy types. And Unity was so nice, it just went ahead and populated enemy A in all 10 of these slots. But, you know, I only had two enemies made, so that seems like overkill. So I'm going to set the size of my enemy list, enemy array, to two, because I have enemy A and enemy B. But I need to get enemy B over there. Well, Unity loves dragging and dropping. I don't know if you've ever noticed this, but if you drag and drop enemy B from your enemy mechs folder, and put him on element one right here, right underneath uh, enemy A, and then boom. Now enemy A and B will spawn in this level. So I could collapse it, but it's going to be very important to keep your enemies list visible because enemy A corresponds to element zero, and enemy B corresponds to element one. Why is that important? Well, let's look at our spawn frequency. We're going to kind of set this up our size like we did our enemies. So two sizes. Now we have two different sliders. And guess what? The slider for element zero for our spawn frequency. Guess what? That pertains to element zero up here, which is our enemy A. So knowing what element our enemies are in will allow us to set our different values. This allows you, this may be a little complicated, but this allows you to set up 50 enemies in a level and set 50 separate spawn frequencies for them because you have to. The rule of thumb is however many enemies you have in your list right here, you have to have the same amount in every subsequent list down here describing their behavior. All right, so basically that's just a fancy way of saying Anywhere you see size, just make it say the same number all the way down. I should have just started with that. All right. So element zero is enemy A, which is maybe like my weaker enemy. So we're going to have it spawn more often. And enemy B will consider that a stronger enemy. So we'll have it spawn less often. 
Think of that as 86% or 32%. Uh, it's not technically that, but you get the idea. The higher the slider, the more often it gets chosen out of your spawners to spawn. And by the way, our enemies list right here is shared between all spawners in our level. Um, our proximity and random, they pull from the same list. So keep that in mind. Uh, score needed to start spawning. Uh, why don't we say, well, okay, what's the rule of thumb for size here? Two, right? Because two, two, and two. In fact, why don't we make this size two as well? And now we can see element zero, zero, zero for enemy A. Element one, 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 one for enemy B. So we've got our spawn frequency set up. Our score to start spawning. Enemy A, uh, we're going to have a score of zero to start spawning. We want this thing to start spawning immediately. But why don't we kill three enemies or get three points before enemy B will start showing up in our spawn choices. And then stop spawning after this score. Whenever we reach five points, we're going to stop spawning enemy a and if you want to never stop spawning an enemy no matter what the score is just leave it at zero zero is kind of like you know what i'm never not going to spawn this enemy so i'm never going to stop spawning um my little bit of code will make sure that zero ensures that he will always spawn no matter the score just the same way that over here if you put zero in he's going to spawn from the get-go same thing down here He's never, he's never going to stop. Um, and then drop chance, uh, we're going to put two down here as well. And now we have element zero and one. And this basically is the chance that we drop power-ups. So my common enemy, uh, we're going to see more of them. So we're going to lower the chances that they drop power-up. But my ultra-hard enemy or my tougher enemy, we're going to make sure, not every single time, if it's 100%, he's going to drop a power-up every single time. That's good for maybe like a boss or something like that, right? Um, element 0 or element 1 uh, is for our enemy B. So we want him to drop a power-up around 70% of the time. All right, so that's basically how our enemy manager works. We set the size of how many enemies we want in our game, may it be at five. We got to make sure that every every time we see five uh, size, we set it to the same size because we want to have the same amount of properties for them, element zero, and in this case, the four. All right, so that's just an example. I'm going to go back to two though because I only have two enemies. The game will error and crash or not let you play if you don't have the exact number of size for each entry here. So make sure all five of these, there's just five different ones. Boom. There's the enemy list itself, frequency, the two different score methods, and their power up drop chance. We got to make sure the size is the same. That's all I'm saying. All right, so what our logic dictates now is that we see uh, our enemy B a lot less than enemy A, um, but enemy B doesn't start spawning until we get three points. Uh, enemy A will start spawning immediately. And then after we get five points, we're done with enemy A. Only enemy Bs will spawn after that. And here's the power-up drop chance right there. Why don't we press play and test out this behavior? When you press enter, that triggers your spawners to start working. You can see now we have little enemies being propagated down there. And there's our random fleeing. So you look at him inching away from us. He's so scared. So we're just going to take him out. That's one point in our game score down here. Okay. Nine points left to beat the level. All right. Boom. Two points, and I'm going to go grab a bad guy from down here. Here's our proximity. So, boom. Now we're going to start spawning enemies over here. And then B. Um, B enemies should start 
uh, showing up because got me in play. Oh, there he is. See, there's our piece right there, right? But now we have many problems. Now, Okay, great. Okay, so that's kind of how spawning works in our game. Uh, a little bit of a long video, but spawning's a complicated matter. Thanks, guys.